So let's look at a couple more examples. Um, these are examples where we're going to need to use the chain rule, but we'll also need to use product rule or, or possibly quotient rule to compute the derivatives. Um, so we'll come over here to the first one. f of x is going to be a product, right? There's a power function multiplied by a sine function, and here we see composition, right? That's where the chain rule is going to come into effect. So we want to compute the derivative. So f prime of x, we're going to have the derivative of x to the fifth. Let's just do that straight away. 5x to the 4 times sine of 2x cubed plus x to the fifth times the derivative of sine of 2x cubed. Okay, so continue on. We're done with that first term, 5x to the fourth sine of 2x cubed. Now, when we proceed to use the chain rule here, right, remember how the chain rule pattern works. We first take the derivative of the outside function, so the derivative of sine is cosine, but we evaluate it at the inside. So we plug in 2x cubed, okay? And finally, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we have 5x to the 4 times sine of 2x cubed plus x to the fifth times cosine of 2x cubed times, so the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, right? So 3 times 2 gives us 6x squared. Uh, we could leave it like that. If you want to take it one step further, uh, you might choose to combine these two terms. Um, just makes it a little bit cleaner. So we have 5x to the 4 sine of 2x cubed plus 6x to the 7 times cos of 2x cubed. Okay. Now... Let's look at the second example. Here we have a quotient, at least it's written as a quotient. Um, and you could tackle this using the quotient rule. And indeed, um, if you look at the presentation that's done in the textbook, they do it using the quotient rule. That's fine. That's certainly an option. Uh, but as we've discussed, the quotient rule is kind of messy. And most people, if they can avoid the quotient rule, they're going to avoid the quotient rule. And in this case, we say, wait a second, laws of exponents tell me that this negative exponent, if I bring that up to the numerator, it becomes a positive exponent. So I can write this as 5x cubed times e to the plus x squared, right? Those are equivalent, right? just through laws of exponents. Um, now, rather than using quotient rule, I only have to use product rule. Right, and product rule is always nicer than quotient rule um, when you can use it. Okay, so this time now we, we, we're starting to get a hang of the chain rule, so maybe we'll just try to kind of jump straight to the answer here. So first of all, there is chain rule. Don't let that chain rule distract you from the fact that there's also still a product, right? So we have to do the derivative of 5x cubed, which is going to give me 15, 5 times 3, x squared, times e to the x squared, okay, plus 5x cubed times. So how do we take the derivative of e to the x squared? Well, e, anytime we take the derivative of an exponential function, we know that nothing happens, right? The derivative of the exponential is the exponential for the natural exponential. We evaluate that derivative using the same argument that we started with, x squared. But then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, right? So that 2x is coming from the derivative of x squared. Finally, if you want, we can clean this up. You can even factor out the e to the x squared if, uh, if you want. So 15 
x squared plus, so 5 times 2 is 10, x cubed times x gives us x to the 4 times e to the x squared, and you're done.